Hi, and welcome back to Type 1 Diabetes Explained. Today, we are going to be discussing what sliding scale insulin is, how and when to use it, and the advantages and disadvantages of its use. Sliding scale insulin is a term that you might have heard a lot right after you were diagnosed, but what is it? Well, sliding scale insulin is a method used to determine how much insulin to give before each meal based on a person's current blood sugar. It is one of several methods that can be used to determine insulin dosage. When using a sliding scale, your doctor or other healthcare professional will provide you with a scale that tells you how many units of insulin to give based on your current blood sugar. For example, using this scale, if your blood sugar before a meal was 225, you would give yourself 5 units of insulin, and if your blood sugar was 316, you would give yourself 10 units. Everybody's scale might be slightly different based on age, sex, body weight, and other factors that can affect how much insulin is needed. Now this system may seem very straightforward and simple compared to what you may be used to doing, and if you've had type 1 diabetes for a long time, then you're probably rarely if ever using a sliding scale. The main reason that they aren't used commonly is because they are simply not specific enough to reliably keep your blood sugar in range. Think about it this way. The sliding scale doesn't take into account any information about the food that you are planning to eat. For example, if you were going to eat a salad one day and a large burger and fries the next, as long as your blood sugar was the same at the start of each meal, you'd administer the same amount of insulin. Even though those two meals have very different amounts of carbohydrates and would likely have very different effects on your blood sugar, the same amount of insulin is given because your blood sugar is the same. So why are we even talking about sliding scales then if it's not really useful? Well, sliding scale is used in some cases when doing full carb counts and corrections may be too complex. This is especially common when you are first diagnosed. When doctors first find out that you have type 1 diabetes, their primary goal is to get your blood sugar in range as fast as possible to help minimize any damage it may cause, especially if it's in a range that could cause DKA, or diabetic ketoacidosis. Having to learn how to do complex carb counts would likely be too much information and end up overwhelming a newly diagnosed patient, so doctors instead opt for sliding scale to provide a simple tool that can help get the patient's blood sugars at least somewhat under control until they have time to learn about more accurate and precise calculations. If you have had type 1 for a long period of time and are used to doing carb counts, it is not recommended that you use a sliding scale. Many studies argue that sliding scale insulin is an outdated technique that shouldn't be used regularly. If your doctor or another medical professional has instructed you to use sliding scale insulin, you can find more resources and instructions on how to do so on the Type 1 Diabetes Explained website linked below, including some problems that allow you to practice using a sliding scale in several different scenarios. If you are interested in learning how to count carbohydrates, you can also find several instructional videos with practice problems linked below. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.